I'm Amanda Beard, seven-time medalist. I get my aquasphere gear at swimoutlet.com, the web's most popular swim shop. Check them out today. This is the Morning Swim Show for Thursday, December 22nd, 2011. I'm your host, Peter Bush. In the Finis Monitor today, we'll talk to Natalie Coughlin, who just broke an American record and was part of a world record-breaking relay at the Duel in the Pool. Natalie Coughlin joins us right now in the Finis Monitor from her home in Lafayette, California. Hey, Natalie, welcome back to the show. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Congratulations <laughs> on breaking more records. Thank you. Yeah, it was quite exciting. It was a really good way to start off Duel in the Pool with an American record and a world record. You seem to us like you've been re-energized lately. Are we looking too much into that? No, it's definitely the case. Um, I've been more excited in training and in, um, in competing than I have ever been. Uh, I think part of that is because it is the Olympic year. And the other part is I knew that, that I was going to be so, so busy with sponsor obligations and media obligations and such that I met with Terry um, McKeever, my swim coach, and then Nick Falker, my strength coach, in the beginning of the year. And we really set this plan ahead that I was going to train no matter what, and I was going to fit in all these things. And for some reason, having such a good plan laid out really gave me um, some something to be excited for. And um, yeah, it's been working out so far. We did a little research, and we were um, looking at your Olympic history. You have 11 medals, and you're only one away from catching Jenny Thompson as the most by a female swimmer ever. So I'm starting to think, is uh, our thoughts of legacy creeping into your head there and how you could be one of the greatest Olympians of all time? Um, a lot of people keep reminding me that I am so close to that record, and that's awesome. I mean, it is my goal to be at the Olympic Games next summer in London, and I hope to qualify in both individual events as well as relays. And I think you know, hope, you know, fingers crossed that I qualify. I think whatever I do qualify in, I, I do have a shot at meddling. Um, so I, I know there's major challenges in front of me. My competition is getting stronger and stronger, both domestically and internationally. But um, I'm, I'm up for the challenge, and I'm really excited about it. That's great that you view it that way, because it's certainly obvious that there's a there's a young crop of swimmers, like you said, both in America and outside that are that, that know that, you know, you might be the best of all time, but that might not matter in 2012. Right. But at the same time, I've been to the Olympics twice before and I have an idea of what to expect. And um, I've said this before, you know, no matter what happens from today on, I'm very, very proud and um, happy with my career. Everything from today on is, you know, icing on the cake. Um, and I think that puts me in a really good position. Um, and it's something that I, I feel like I don't have much pressure on me. But at the same time, I feel like I could be better than I've ever been in the past. How would you describe your relationship with Missy Franklin? Missy and I um, get along really well. I mean, I don't think anyone doesn't get along with Missy. <laughs> it would be a shock if, if um, I heard that someone did. Um, but everyone loves Missy, myself included. And, um, you know, for a 16-year-old, she's so mature. And I just recently met both her parents, who are amazing people. And I could see why she has such a good head on her shoulders, because they're just two amazing people. And... You know, you see her in interviews and at meets, and she's just like, oh, my God, I'm so excited to be here. This is amazing. I'm so happy, and blah, 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 blah. And sometimes you could see people like that, and you think they're putting on an act. But Missy is honestly like that, and it's refreshing. I've never met anyone who is legitimately so excited to be there, no matter what's going on in training or at a meet. And, you know, she's a good energy to be around. I'm wondering if her, her addition to the national team has helped re-energize you and others, just if nothing else, knowing that your relay potentials are so much greater for gold medals with her as a part of them. Oh, it's, it's, we're in a really good position um, because, you know, Missy, she could swim 
uh, backstroke or freestyle. You have Dana who could swim uh, butterfly or freestyle. I could do, you know, backstroke um, or, you know, maybe a freestyle. And then we have Rebecca who is, you know, so dominant. And um, it's nice in the medley relay to have so many different options with those four people. But then also oh, there are so many other greats out there. So um, we do have very, very strong relays um, in our future, I think. Yeah, we were talking about that before this interview behind the scenes, Jeff Cummings and I. You could mix up that medley relay a few different ways. I mean, you could easily flip-flop with Missy, free and back. Uh, heck, you could probably do breaststroke the way we saw you swim at the Georgia <laughs> Invite and still qualify for the top eight. Um, I don't think I'm going to be put on uh, any relays in breaststroke, but <laughs> <laughs> that's the case. But um, I have been working on it. Um, yeah, I, I think that's a good position to be in. And I think Jack um, Bowerly last weekend was considering mixing it up a little bit, but then just decided to go with the tried and true Mia's backstroke and Missy as freestyle and Dana and Rebecca in the middle. And I, you know, it worked out really, really well. Is that the way you'd prefer it at the Olympics if everybody qualified? I mean, my, I'll always swim no matter where they want me to swim, but I prefer to go um, towards the front of the relay. And I like to start even with people. I don't uh, like to start either ahead or behind. So, um, and, and plus my flat starts are really good. Uh, my relay starts are, are good, but I think my flat starts are really good. So I think that's why I am um, let off in the relay so often. Are you working on that breaststroke so much because you're thinking about swimming the 200 IM? Um, I'm considering the 200 IM. Um, mainly, I'm working on the breaststroke just because I was just like, what the heck? You know, I haven't done a 100-yard breaststroke in 11, 10 years or so. And I was with my husband at a meet in Italy. And uh, my husband, Ethan Hall, he coaches. And he does such a phenomenal job of teaching me how to do breaststroke. For some reason, the way he teaches it really clicks with me. And um, I was working on the 100 IM in Italy, and and we were just really, really working on my breaststroke. And it was, you know, it was something fun for me to do a couple weeks ago to really focus on the 100 breast because I'll probably never focus on the 100 breast ever again. <laughs> When's the last time you went dancing? The last time I went dancing, um, I don't think it was that long ago. It was probably at one of the, you know, several weddings I've been to this year. Um, yeah, I've been, I've had like 11 friends get married this year, so I'm sure it's one of those weddings. <laughs> My brother's getting married New Year's Eve. You got any recommendations what I should do to get the party started? To get the party started. Um, ever since my Dancing with the Stars career, um, I do like to do the, the, you know, the spins and stuff. And um, my husband, you know, he, he just goes with it. I just hold on to his hand and I just like spin around. I think it's really fun. But <laughs> Fair to say um, you're leading. <laughs> I, I think just having confidence on the dance floor is what matters the most and just having a really good time. <laughs> you're also an excellent cook. I must ask, what are you cooking for Christmas dinner? Um, well, uh, Ethan and I, we have a tradition that, um, you know, we go to my grandparents' house for Christmas Eve, and then his parents early Christmas morning, and then my parents for brunch. And then the two of us, we get a bunch, bunch of Dungeness crabs, and we just feast on crabs uh, Christmas dinner, just the two of us. And uh, we've been doing that for a few years now, and I can't wait to go pick up our crabs on Friday. Hmm, crabs for Christmas. Yes, very San Francisco. <laughs> we just learned something new about Natalie Coughlin, everyone. <laughs> I'm fighting a cold. Do you have any good chicken soup, you know, uh, recipes that would uh, get me out of this funk? Uh, yes, I do have some quite, quite uh, good chicken soup recipes, and that is supposed to be, you know, scientifically proven to be very good for you. So I'd recommend it. <laughs> a little tequila in the sauce, is that what it is? Um, I don't know of that one, but I'm that, sure it's delicious. That's very Arizona. Okay. <laughs> I would have had soy sauce, so that's my Asian flair, but um, I'm sure tequila is really good, too. <laughs> well, Natalie, it was wonderful catching up with you. Fantastic 2011. Can't wait to see what happens next year. Thank you. It was, it was very nice talking with you, and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's. All right. Thanks. See you, Natalie. Thanks. All right. That's Natalie Coughlin joining us in the Finis Monitor today. And that's it for today's show. I'm Peter Bush reminding you to keep your head down at the finish.